Have you ever wondered why a massive 18-wheeler truck can come to a full stop in a few hundred feet, but a train, which rides on smooth steel rails, can take over a mile to stop completely? On the surface, it seems like both trucks and trains are just big machines rolling on wheels. But when it comes to braking, the differences are profound and fascinating. Today, we're going to explore the key differences between truck brakes and train brakes, how they work, why they're designed the way they are, and what makes each system suited to its own unique role in transportation. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with trucks. Most large commercial trucks on the road today use air brake systems. These are not your standard hydraulic brakes like you'd find in a car. Air brakes use compressed air to apply pressure to brake pads or shoes that create friction and slow the vehicle down. The reason air is used rather than hydraulic fluid comes down to safety and reliability. Air can't leak in the same catastrophic way fluid can. If there's a leak in an air brake line, the brakes default to a locked position, a failsafe. Truck brakes are typically made up of drums or discs and are often S-cam drum brakes which use a camshaft to press the brake shoes against the drum from the inside. Now contrast that with trains, which use a very different type of air brake system called the Westinghouse air brake system, named after its inventor, George Westinghouse. Introduced in the late 1800s, this system revolutionized train safety. Here's the clever part. It uses a constant stream of pressurized air to keep the brakes off. When a train driver wants to apply the brakes, they release some of the air pressure in the brake pipe, and that triggers a chain reaction down the length of the train where each car's own reservoir applies pressure to its brakes. It's counterintuitive. Less air means more braking, but it's incredibly safe. If the train loses air pressure due to a break in the line or decoupling of cars, the brakes automatically activate. One of the first questions people ask is, why does it take so long for a train to stop, even when its brakes are fully engaged? The answer comes down to three things, mass, friction, and coordination. Trains are unbelievably heavy, each freight car can weigh up to 143 tons when fully loaded, and a full train may have 100 cars or more. Second, the contact area between steel wheels and steel rails is very small and has low friction, which is great for efficient movement, but not so great for stopping. And third, the braking signal has to travel down the entire length of the train through the brake pipe. That signal is transmitted by a pressure change which takes time. So the brakes on the first car apply slightly before the ones on the last car, leading to a delayed and gradual deceleration rather than a sharp stop. Truck brakes, on the other hand, are designed for quick, responsive braking. Because trucks share the road with other vehicles, they need to stop in much shorter distances. The compressed air system in trucks sends brake pressure to all wheels simultaneously when the driver hits the pedal. And because trucks have rubber tires on asphalt, the coefficient of friction is significantly higher than steel on steel. Plus, truck air brake systems often include engine braking or jake brakes, which use the engine's own compression to slow the vehicle down without relying entirely on friction brakes, especially useful on steep downhill grades. Both systems, however, have to deal with one universal enemy, heat. When you brake, kinetic energy is converted into thermal energy, and that heat has to go somewhere. Truck brakes can experience brake fade if they overheat, something especially dangerous during long descents. That's why you'll often see runaway truck ramps on mountain highways. Trains also deal with heat, but because their braking is more gradual and spread across dozens of cars, it's typically less intense per axle. Still, modern trains may use dynamic braking, especially in electric and diesel-electric locomotives, which converts braking energy into electricity, 
and dissipates it as heat through resistor grids, reducing wear on traditional brakes. Safety is a major concern in both systems. Trains and trucks are both equipped with fail-safes to prevent accidents in case of brake failure. For trains, the automatic application of brakes when air pressure drops is a lifesaver. For trucks, the spring brake system acts as a parking and emergency brake. These are heavy-duty springs that stay compressed while the air system is active. If air pressure is lost, the springs automatically expand and apply the brakes. This way, even in total system failure, the vehicle doesn't run uncontrolled. In recent years, technology has brought innovations to both systems. For trains, electronically controlled pneumatic or ECP brakes have been introduced on some railroads. These allow the train operator to send an electronic signal to each car's brakes simultaneously significantly reducing stopping distance. For trucks, anti-lock braking systems OABS have become standard, helping prevent skidding during emergency braking. Some advanced trucks even feature automatic emergency braking or AEB and adaptive cruise control, using radar and sensors to help drivers avoid collisions. So why are truck and train brakes so fundamentally different? Because their operational environments and requirements are worlds apart. Trucks drive on busy roads, stop frequently, and need to maneuver around obstacles. Trains move in straight lines on tracks with minimal turns, rarely stop, and carry enormous mass. Truck brakes need to be fast, responsive, and controlled by a human driver at all times. Train brakes need to be safe, redundant, and controllable across hundreds of wheels stretching over a mile. Each system has evolved to serve its unique context as efficiently and safely as possible. At first glance, a brake is a brake, but dive deeper and you find that the braking systems in trucks and trains are finely tuned responses to their environments, constraints, and roles. Trucks rely on air disc or drum brakes with powerful, immediate stopping capabilities. Trains use sophisticated pneumatic networks where the absence of air is what brings a machine to a halt. Both systems are marvels of engineering, designed not just to stop massive machines, but to do so reliably, predictably, and safely. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.